Saturday, November 5th, Pitt State football at home against Washburn. Gorillas 8-0 heading into the matchup, sitting in first place in the conference standings. The Pitt State defense was tough on quarterback Dane Simino early as neither team got off to a great start, and we headed into the second quarter with a score of 0-0. But later in the first half, Gorillas now down 10-0 to the Ichabods and in need of a spark. Washburn set up to kick it off with Brown and Thomas back to receive. Brown fields it in the end zone, streaks up the middle, and uses a few blocks from his teammates to take it 100 yards for the score. Fire that cannon because John Brown came to play. On the ensuing drive, Washburn set up on their own 20. Simino hands off to Sean McPherson, who's met immediately by J.R. Jones. Ball's knocked loose and scooped up by Paul Robinson. The crowd can't believe it, and Robinson rumbles in for the score. The extra point would be blocked, but Gorillas lead it 13-10. Washburn would go on a roll for the next two quarters, scoring 20 unanswered points. That sets us up late in the fourth quarter. Gorillas down 37-13, but it's not over just yet. Zach Dickey connects with John Brown near the end zone. He's going to walk in untouched for the score. The two-point conversion would be no good. Gorillas now trailing 37-19. On the ensuing kickoff, Jake Craig angles it perfectly to Marty Fannensteel for the Ichabods, who thinks he's got it, but Tyler Disney says, I don't think so. Disney with the hit, Josh Heimerman with the recovery, Gorillas with the ball and still very much alive. Pitt State set up with good field position after the recovery, and Dickey finds John Brown once again. He hauls it in near the two-yard line and somersaults in for the score. His third TD of the day, Gorillas down 37-25. The two-point conversion from Dickey to Brisch and Kelly was called incomplete, and unfortunately that's as far as the comeback would go. Gorillas take their first loss of the season, 43-25 at the hands of the Ichabod, to move to 8-1 on the year. Players and coach Tim Beck after the game. You know, it's a, it's a high emotional game, and there's going to be mistakes and there's going to be middle errors because you're so amped up and, and whatnot. But, you know, that's, you know, it's better now than in the postseason. So now we're fighting for the postseason, you know, and, you know, sometimes a loss in a situation like this can be a, can make a team a lot better. And, and that's the only way we can, we can approach, you know, next week's practice is that, you know, we have to get better. And, um, be more consistent, you know, all across the board. Yep, we uh, obviously going to try to make them one-dimensional. It's always our plan, but we uh, couldn't get the job done. Give credit to them once again, and we couldn't get them out of their game plan. That's uh, that's what hurt us. When we come to practice on Tuesday, we can't just let this this uh, you know hang around. We got to get rid of it. We got to move on to the next thing. And so that's why today and tomorrow we don't feel very good about ourselves. Tuesday we got to get back on track and uh, get refocused on, on the next game, which is Missouri Southern, which will be another huge game for us. The Gorillas will host Missouri Southern next Saturday in Kearney Smith Stadium as they look for their shot at the conference championship. Kickoff is set for 2.05 p.m. with the game being broadcasted on MIAA-TV.